I want to put it tonight into the context of what's going uh, on first of in all, the um, apparently mad world. That first of all, the, the, I mean, this the same structure. was basically theater. And, in the uh, sense we started and, and it's a very a beautiful example of, for the last six uh, of months, Shiva's sense of humor. One complaint and of after the, uh, against the, the nuances and levels um, of in intelligence Attacking that the ego, because of its projections useless. and wishful thinking, um, cannot see or cannot see months. in time to stop dog, itself from but, being uh, harmed or affected no or detoured or uh, in, in some way uh, uh, deviated so from its real sure. goal Maybe what and was from its uh, affected empowered him and prompted him into understanding this of how to uh, the Ministry of Defense move had announced a regulation uh, that was effectively successfully going to strip him of the Wagner uh, through it was going the to, unfolding uh, take it and drama it into of the, the MOD. World. And of course, he made because a lot of once money you're in your real self, when it was you see the world from the level of the implicate the order, no longer and the those explicate contracts order. Were what made him and the implicate in the order is present, Peter's all present when now. He provided it's not in a linear future, so that, well, I don't know what's going to happen. That's how he made his money. It he went from supermarkets the implicate order gives an understanding. And of then he got a much contract, uh, larger event partner. horizon, and this would have left him with nothing. In which and it's possible uh, that the clarity a, of, a uh, of a reaction the destiny to that, of a very that unfoldment emotional was reaction. much more. He'd always uh, felt that the system was against him, and he was and one very volatile. see around the arc of anyway, time. But nothing really quite so explains the, uh, the language that he was using. In that last day, the recent in the events video, are uh, in the, the political the realm command, in the, the world, particularly between had killed Russia his troops, and, uh, had bombed NATO, them and killed them. Uh, are and he uh, went on an example video of the alchemical you know, they were principle of uh, Putin as was above, so below, and or that they were as, uh, Putin, as in Putin. the and the Russian uh, internal people. consciousness, and so in the external, the and the what is happening in the microcosm of the ego is happening in the But on the other hand, I mean. And Were I've already other, talked about how this is a time of mutiny, it, and mutiny know, is the theme it's a, it's uh, of really the current uh, uh, part of the of God's Nigma theme park that the we're all going through and enjoying the rides on, and uh, and we've just been treated to a, a wonderful little ride over the last 24, 48 hours for those who were, you know, watching with bated breath, uh, you know, this performance that was going on. It was the most brilliant military ruse, I think, that was ever uh, uh, put over by, uh, by any, uh, 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 any military national organization, you know. Napoleon didn't manage this, Hitler didn't manage it, Stalin, uh, Clausewitz, even Sun Tzu would have bowed, uh, I think, uh, to Putin over this one. So, Let's go back to uh, the original uh, understanding of what was happening this week, all right? Because most of the commentators that I've, I've checked online still don't get it. And they were all fooled. Even, even the ones who you know, should have known better were all fooled by this. So let's, let's go back and see how it must have unfolded, knowing that the Russians have incredible intelligence gathering capacities, not just uh, human intelligence, they have it much better than, than the West has uh, on, on Russia, but also the cyber hacking and, uh, and, and uh, satellite uh, spying and all kinds of, of managing to uh, infiltrate and, uh, and pick up the messages that are being secretly sent among the enemy without them knowing that you picked it up, right? That, that's the, the basic job of the uh, intelligence uh, division, right? So the Russians clearly knew months ago that uh, the West was planning to use this uh, air defender war game as uh, a possibility of making it go live and them doing this all-out air invasion of Russia and, uh, and hoping to wipe them out in a first strike by, uh, uh, by uh, a surprise uh, attack. And uh, Russia clearly knew this already because they had the plan this months ahead and, uh, and bring uh, this whole exercise into being and prepare all the vassal states uh, to be ready and to refurbish jet planes, et cetera. So a huge, 
logistical process was underway and they were able to detect all of it. So what they did was they created a new Richard III, okay, <laughs> named Prigozhin. <laughs> and first they make him this heroic warrior hero, but then you see gradually he gets more and more unhappy with the, the bosses in the military and uh, the Ministry of Defense and eventually he's coming out and calling them the worst names possible. You know, Nobody does this and gets away with it in any army, but he gets away with it. Well, because he's a hero and he's indispensable and we can't do without him, right, and all of that. So he, he, he gets away with the most insulting statements and accusations. We're not getting any ammo. You're, you know, you're, you're not defending us. And, there's, and then later, there's even a crazy general who put mines behind us so we can't retreat. And then you even bombed our, uh, our people, right? So it gets higher and higher levels of antagonism to the Russian government, and he builds up his credibility as somebody no who might be unit, turned, right, no to, uh, to change sides, because no he's so angry, no and he's got so much power, because he's leading this invincible Wagner force, you know, that uh, uh, is all conquering. So when he's in Bakhmut, right, fighting this battle, he's collecting a lot of prisoners of war, uh, some, some that he's actually capturing in, from their positions and command posts that have been surrounded, others who are simply uh, surrendering and voluntarily and, and, uh, and, and wanting to be out of it. So he's got a, a huge group of, uh, of prisoners, some of whom are probably very high NATO officers, are probably Brits or Germans, right? And so he calls the highest officer in and he says, I'm going to let you go back to NATO command. I'm going to sneak you out of here. But I want you to give this letter to the high mucky muck who's making the decisions. And, uh, and the letter says, I'm willing to change sides. I can lead a, a, a coup against Russia. I can win it, I'm sure. If you'll give me the backing, then, uh, then I'll do it. And they say, of course, well, prove it, do it. And he says, okay, but it'll take me time. And I can't do it until about the last day of your air exercise. <laughs> right? So now, they are, are waiting to see, do we go, do we do this World War III attack that might actually lose and we all die? Or do we hope that our, you know, our, our most cherished uh, wet dream is that Russia will come apart and uh, you know, there will be a coup and somebody will take over who will surrender and we'll split Russia up into different blocks and we'll get all the wealth and uh, we win, you know, and then we defeat China after that. Right? So here is the opportunity. Right? They're all, I'm sure they're all salivating over this and saying, go for it. And so on that last day, but right at the end of uh, their opportunity to go live, yes, the coup is on. The evidence comes in. And, and there's even fake news. Lukashenko has fled from Belarus. Putin has fled. They don't know where he is. Airplanes are being shot down and helicopters. All, it's all fake, but it, they believe it because Russia controls the space. And Wagner's troops come in and conquer all of Rostov, you know. They occupy this Russian city, you know. And, uh, and now they're moving to Voronezh there, and their convoy is going up to Moscow. Oh, my God. And then you see Putin giving this. I've never seen Putin like this, a brilliant performance. He actually <laughs> looks scared. Like, we don't know what's going to happen, but treason is really bad, you know, and we've got to stop this guy somehow. I mean, they could have bombed him in two seconds anywhere. They know where he is. They have precision missiles. They're, they bombed the, the leaders of the Ukrainian army already. They can't bomb this guy. No, 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 we can't touch him, you know. And then you get former prime ministers and others uh, from Russia saying, we don't know what's going to happen, but probably he's going to end up taking over the government, you know. And all of these rumors are put out, and they tell people again, yes, yes. Okay, so they let the exercise end and, the, you know, the planes then have to fly back to their bases and they lost their opportunity to do this. And in the meantime, under the cover of this, he's moving all troops into total readiness so that if there is an attack, they will now be able to knock down all the planes and win possibly a World War III, even though Putin doesn't want to fight it, but they're ready. And in addition, 
They've moved under the cover of this uh, anti-Prigozhin thing more and more troops to the border of Ukraine so that now they are ready to do the big blitzkrieg. And I would bet in the next couple of days they, they enter Ukraine from Belarus, from Russia, from, from Donbass, from, from all over, and they end this thing. And, and the West has lost its opportunity, and they're in shock with egg on their face, and they got taken, right? So it's a brilliant performance, and it gives us a reprieve from the end of the world, okay? So we owe that to Putin, I think, although Shiva, I'm sure, was responsible for his, you know, getting uh, that idea. But it was brilliantly performed. They have the, these incredible crisis actors in Rostov running from, you know, bombs and all of that. 